All right. You may know my guest as the host of the Red River Podcast, also co-host of If I Rule the World Podcast. He is the guitar player and singer of the rock and roll band Playing Dead, not the shitty Grateful Dead cover band. He's also the rhythm guitar player of the pilot program, appears in the Long Island supergroup Carlos Danger, and has his own cover band, Cover Me Bad, along with 50 other things I probably don't even remember. Yeah. So, my man, Sam Hoyos, thank you for fucking... Uh, joining me on a lockdown on the block here. Yo, thank you for uh, doing this on uh, the 5th of May, uh, which is Cinco de Mayo, and uh, you're definitely getting your Hispanic quota in. Rock and roll, man. Feliz uh, Cinco de Mayo, mi chico. Yeah. Muy bien, muy bien. All right, so check it out, man. Are you wearing any pants today? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> I just came from uh, having food, like um, our friend Christine made us, um, so she lived in like Mexico City for like years. Awesome. And uh, you know, if you saw her, you wouldn't know, you know, she's Long Island girl, blonde hair, you know, really cool. Um, and, but man, she made some uh, some chicken enchiladas with greens, like it was just banging, like straight up, like legit, like, like your uh, Mexican abuelita made them for you. Nice. I just did some arroz con pollo, but I just didn't do it. It was a gabacho version. It wasn't that good, man. <laughs> so I'm working on it. But um, so, I mean, like I said in the intro, obviously, you're in quite a lot of musical projects and you're in a bunch of podcasts and shit. Um, you consume more media than anybody I know in research. I mean, <laughs> but what are you doing right now? I mean, how are you not going stir fucking crazy without having to run out and play so many? You prolifically probably play four to eight gigs every month at the very least, sometimes more. Right. So like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> so, you know, it's funny, like um, your perception of, of what I do is, is, is interesting <laughs> because I feel like you do way more than I do. I mean, you went to another state to record a record. Uh, you're constantly checking in, uh, you know, airports in China and Italy, <laughs> um, you know, so well, I like, think I had the virus first because I was yeah. in fucking Italy and Seattle is that you? <laughs> in Orlando, so maybe it's been chasing me around, you know, I don't know. Um, but. Well, it followed you here. I hate to break it to you. I might be patient zero. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, we, uh, the reason I started playing guitar in, uh, in uh, Joe Hess's band, uh, the pilot program, is because I felt like my other band wasn't playing as much. Um, so I, I was just like, oh, you know what? I'm like, everything that we say no to, which seems to be 90% of the things we get asked to do, um, I won't get into why. I mean, it just seems like a scheduling thing. I don't know. Um, uh, so I was like, Joe, teach me your songs. And, you know, like um, any show we say no to, we'll just play. Um, so, yeah, I felt very stagnant. But I will say um, that never stopped me from writing. So we always like to make new music and record it. And, uh, you know, we were in the middle of making another record when all this happened. So, yeah, man, I, I, I'm like you. I like to just stay busy. And just like you, um, the, the good part about my position in the band or in the songwriting is that I play guitar and I write the songs. So therefore, whether the band is behind me or not behind me, I could always just pick up a guitar and play. Yeah, it's definitely comes in handy. I mean, initially I was trying to do this forced creativity thing the first two weeks of it where I'll just wake up in the morning and immediately just try to write and a lot, you know, trying to do it like the Joseph Arthur way, but that just doesn't work for, I think, me. I'm a little, I need more meticulous, maybe planning or inspiration strikes me at odd times. I'm not a good morning person, I guess. But I've been, I definitely wrote a bunch of pretty bad songs off the bat. But, you know, if you get one line or one riff out of them, you know, that's, that's really all you need, yeah. But um, yeah, I want to get back to, you know, you recorded five albums, I think, and you just put out an EP called uh, Catharsis of Choice. Yeah, man. Um, so we, we put out a record in 2018 called The Inevitable. So there was 10 songs on there. And um, we had just found our new guitar player, Rich Ferraro. And we seem cool. to always lose one member, which is the lead guitar player. I so tend when to lose he, three or four, so I understand. <laughs> We're like nine snails, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, but the nucleus stays the same, you know? Um, so we always seem to lose our, our lead guitar player. And uh, we were so excited when we got, when we found Rich, that I felt like um, where Chris Morell, our, our last guitar player, was very like Ryan Adams, very singer-songwriter based. 
that it, it allowed me to let, write different songs like Perforated and stuff like that. Um, but when Rich joined, I felt like we got our balance back. So I felt like, hey, let me write like these up-tempo songs that were more in the vein of what we came from, which was like super chunk, get up kids type style. Um, so what I realized after making those 10 songs was uh, we don't tour, we barely play shows. So for me to shove 10 songs down people's throats, like eventually people forget about that record. So um, I started uh, really getting involved with Spotify, Apple Music, Instagram. And I said to myself, um, okay, if we're not gonna tour, let me just release more music um, every like six months. Like, so if we had like 15 songs, so I said, instead of releasing 15 songs where all those songs are gonna get lost, um, let me do four, five, and five and spread them out. And then by the time those come out, like, you know, I'm constantly writing. So it'll be th this thing um, where, you know, we, we could only play Beery so many times. And, yeah. and, and at this point, you know, you either know what we do and want to check it out um, or you don't. So that's, that's where we, where we are. And we put out four songs. Um, also visuals, visuals are a big thing. Um, yeah, you guys did some cool fucking videos, man. And that video for 16 is a uh, really killer. I mean, I love that song too. I think that's like my favorite on it, but, uh, um, yeah, we, um, um, my buddy Neil Rubenstein was like, uh, let's do a video. I think he wanted to kind of like fuck around with what he had as far as like, you know, uh, you know, something for his reel. So I said, let's yeah. do this. He liked the song start today. Um, and then I was like, let's do one for 16 as well. And my friend Jim, who's also like a camera guy for um, Mari Povich for like ever. Nice. So he, I went to that show. I, I, saw, I saw the bad kids getting screamed at by the fucking drill instructors. It was fucking awesome. Oh, my God. Okay. So, so you didn't go to like the – it's usually like the, the, the who's the father one or like – Yeah, it was one. before we got into all that. Like I saw him years ago and we ended up actually like becoming friends with like uh, the hype man and uh, running around the city with him and we ended up – getting into more episodes and then my friend got to go on the stage and get hypnotized and start fucking uh, hosting the show so it was pretty pretty bizarre okay week that we had but i didn't mean to cut you off with that but no, uh, no, yeah, yeah that's fine um yeah so you know we we made one for 16 which is kind of like a an autobiographical song like it was very much like we gave the the song to the director he came up with something and the treatment he gave me was awesome but it, it, it was like Silence of the Lambs. And <laughs> it was something bizarre. And I was like, yo, Mike, that's kind of not really what the song's about. He's like, it's not. <laughs> I was just like, I'm like, no. I'm like, it was just kind of like, you know, being a kid and like some situations that happened when I was 17. Um, but 16 just worked better. So You didn't want to um, get uh, strapped to a hand truck with a fucking hockey mask on and doing your vocals? No, it was kind of like, that's where it was going. It was, but so the idea was cool, but I knew that, I wanted to do something that we could actually pull off. And uh, so that's why I printed up like those shirts and we ended up with meat 16, you know, <laughs> um, which like, like when I put that shirt on the director, Jim was like, yo, like your shirt says meat 16. I'm like, no, it's me at that's 16. <laughs> and uh, from then on, it just kept going and going. And, uh, <laughs> and that's it, man. You know, we, we figure if we attack the records with a handful of songs, it, it makes a lot of sense to release a video or two. And now with technology, um, you know, everything is, is so DIY if you want it to be. Yeah, my buddy uh, out in Kentucky, he's got a band called Songs for Sabotage. And they just did a video with their iPhones. And it fucking, with the filters and this shit, it looks like fucking it was done on film. I mean, you can do anything. Um, Steve Soderbergh. Steve Soderbergh yeah. made the movie Unsane, which I thought was amazing. Uh, a couple of years ago, he made it on an iPhone. And it was one of the best movies I saw that year. You can get a lot of good footage on it. It's just uh, you need a, a, a Mac that you can airdrop to because sending the files is a fucking nightmare out of your phone, man. But um, yeah, do the airdrop, yeah. Definitely. Um, as an artist, man, with Spotify, yeah, I think you're on the right path because when you drop a record now, like you get, you can have singles leading up to it. And you can have a really good like first month or two, and then your fucking numbers just plummet and skyrocket. Always. If you don't get on like a curated list or kids don't put you on theirs, you don't get the algorithm. Yeah. You know, which we're not going to do. So, you know, that's, that's what it is. Um, yeah. But even it, being it, on the road with a record, I could tell you like the ones that were selling physical ones sometimes at the shows. And yeah, we always try to walk around to everybody and be like, Hey, can you like us on Spotify? If you dug us, whatever. 
and you see some like momentum with that but i'm telling you like the first release week is like everything with that so it makes more sense to continually stagger fucking uh content throughout the year you know you're you're a madman um <laughs> you you're amazing you know you're the what you do even when when you lose a member um but your numbers are great uh you you're unbelievable everything you do is is you know i look at you and i'm like this <laughs> everything like you could come up with like the the craziest shit and and i would believe it like you know you guys could end up on like you know rocking eve like somewhere with like you know like uh who's that that guy uh um who's that new year's eve guy the clark's <laughs> fucking hologram uh fucking ryan seacrest that like, guy yeah like he could an, like i would be like oh shit yeah brian got their, the the band on this you know like i just feel like you're capable of, of doing a lot of things I think we could get on New Year's Rock and Eve in like Ecuador, not America. That's completely possible. I mean, I mean, look, a lot of my friends' bands have gotten to Japan and Europe, so it's anyone can do it. You know, it's just finding the way and the will and making sure everybody has a valid passport and has no convictions. That's really the fucking problem. I'm sure Juan's got some hookups down there. Oh, definitely. We we've been on the radio and shit down there, but it's um, and we were um, in talks to try to go get involved with some festival in June, but obviously, you know we're not leaving the New York city area anytime soon, you know, with, you know, the COVID lockdown, you know? No, but those guys you have are, are very, um, like very dedicated, you Definitely. know, and they, 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 um, there's always a band and there's always the one guy that does everything and everyone else is just kind of, and it works out, you know, that's fine. But I, I feel like you got, you have like two dudes, uh, that are definitely plugging away at a lot of things like you are. Yeah, it definitely helps. And everyone has like kind of a different skill set. So we can all like compliment each other or not. Because you can't just be like, oh, I'm doing this, everybody. Like back in the day, you used to make everybody go on MySpace and force us to get likes and shit. But now it's like, <laughs> you know, I'll do, I'll deal with writing the songs and booking shows and making deals with people and try to get us sequenced and shit. One, we needed a place to do like decent demos. And he built a fucking like multi thousand dollar demo studio in his fucking basement. Like, it looks week, amazing. Yeah, I mean, he's got a packaged graveyard out back from all the fucking gear he gets. It's fucking insane. And then that helped us because, you know, we record in Atlanta and we started, luckily we started doing our album in February before all this shit really hit the fan. And we were able to get quite a bit of it done, but normally I would, I and whoever else needed to would make several more trips down there to continue it, but it's just not possible, so uh the producer mailed us some gear he let us take some shit home and we had uh some good mics and whatnot we were able to plug into the system and we were able to continue working up here and so we had to then in suffolk i'm um, in queens so you know we're trying to avoid each other as best we can for now but we were able to at least finish seven songs you know and i think we'll be able to finish a few more you know oh, that's that's super cool you know yeah. i wish um uh, i wish we had done like i was doing the vocals uh, on the five songs and I got like three of them. Um, and then I was going to go do the other two around the time that everything kind of got locked down. And I wish I had them because, you know, if, if we were sitting on five songs, you know, you can keep yourself busy, you know, you, yeah, you know, every day you put them down the pipeline. Yeah. I mean, I'm listening to a lot of mixes right now and that's kind of like where I'm at with them, but you guys, uh, you recorded at Steven Seagal's former fucking mansion, right? Like, <laughs> Is that real or are you guys just bullshitting? Because I was like, no, no, that's <laughs> that's super real. Um, you you got to call the EP. It's got to have a three word title like "Above the Law" or like "Marked for Death." Like it can't. It should be like fucking "Here to Punch" or something. You know? Who shot Bobby? Nice. All right. Um, Bobby yeah. Lupo. Yeah, of course. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, Jerry Farley works out of a lot of places. Um, it just happens that he, you know, we were there and when we rolled up, man, it's what a sight. We took like a drone shot of it and it's, uh, saw that. <laughs> it's, I, I can't really even describe what it was like. And then we went outside to take a picture and then I looked over, um, you know, we're by the water. I was like, Oh, wh what's that next to the house that we were recording? at? he's like, Oh, that's the actual house. We're in the guest house. <laughs> I was like, Whoa, that's fucking crazy. Like we were, I thought we were in the mansion that they turned into a recording studio. We were in the guest house. 
you know, and uh, so we went there and, and we, we, we tracked, you know, our, our stuff, like uh, everything but like the, the punch-ins. Cool. So you just track live as a band, just, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was, uh, the only weird thing was, is I was downstairs and headphones and they were upstairs in the live room. I've actually done something like that too. Like I was in a cramped basement, like doing guitars and the drums were on another floor above me on, yeah. a, on like a previous thing one time. I hate recording. So that's like, that's the difference between us. Like I enjoy playing live to a degree, but I'm more, I'm definitely more prolific in the studio. I'm happier in the studio. I definitely have more of a blast there. For me, it's a lot of nerves for me to play a gig because it's like, I'm, because I'm responsible for booking in a lot of the other bands and shit. And I'm responsible for getting people in the fucking door and watching the money and chasing the guy down the block and tries to rob us and all the fucking shit that goes on that. Like I'm constantly not in the mode I want to be in as an entertainer. I'm watching the crowd and be like, well, why are these guys going to the bathroom during this fucking song? Should we cut it next tomorrow? You know, like wow. in the studio, I don't think about any of that shit. I'm just fucking writing and ripping and cracking beers and laughing. I'm not like doing 50 sit-ups and fucking yoga and, and voice yeah. exercises every day. You know, it's more, no. it's more fun, you know? Like, what I tell people, um, cause I get nervous before shows too. That's why I don't eat. <laughs> um, and usually we end up playing last, which always sucks. Cause I'm like, the fuck am I going to eat finally? I can't um, do that anymore. I want to be in the middle always. Like I just, <laughs> but we, um, I just feel bad. So whenever we book the show, I, I, I put us last cause no one wants to play. So if I book the show, I'm like, we'll play last, which I'm sure my band hates. But <laughs> but I tell people all the time, it's like, you could be the best band in the world, but if I have a shitty vocal night, we sound like shit. Yeah. You know, you could you could have the best music, and if I sound like shit, then it doesn't matter. You know, if I sing like shit that night, so that's usually what I'm thinking. But it's also subjective. You think you're doing a bad job. You know what you're capable of. I know what I'm capable of, but is the audience reception is never what you expect. I mean, the days where I'm belting and sounding fantastic no one could give two shits one show i was sick as fuck i sounded like i was screaming up tom waits asshole and the voice was coming out of his mouth and people fucking loved it people yeah. were going nuts i'm like so you know you, you just don't know you don't know if you're having a bad show until it's over you know like no but you know like is is um you know I, I think uh, for people like us, like we, we feel like, or I'll say for myself, I feel like this is what I know how to do the best. Yeah. Um, whether or not this is what we do for a living, it doesn't matter. It's like, I feel like this is, you know, you, you, you give me a, a set of breaks and tell me to change my, you know, your breaks. I would be like, well, I need to watch a YouTube video. I need to, you give me a guitar and sit me in a room for 30 minutes. I'll write you a song. Whether or not it'll be good, I don't know. It depends on you but it's something that I know how to do. Um, and I feel that whenever, whenever you do something and you feel like you're shitty at the thing you're supposed to be good at for the night, that's really when like the bad feelings come where you're just like, man, I'm mediocre. I suck. I shouldn't even be playing, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's easy to get lost in that and just go in a negativity spiral and whatnot. But I mean, then, but then sometimes like you hear the audio back from the board from that show a couple weeks later when you're detached from it, you're like, no, it's actually pretty good. Like, yeah. what was I thinking? You know, like you gotta cut yourself some slack. It's supposed to be fucking fun. It's like, fun. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, for sure. And it's tricky. Cause you spend a lot of time rehearsing and getting your set down, you, you know, and I, especially with like us, we'd like to do song into song into song, like Ramon style and have like little, have like things scripted out to a degree and then one thing goes wrong the fucking the chain of the fucking kick breaks and you lose your momentum and everything goes out the window and then the yeah, mic yeah. zaps you yeah oh i get electrocuted all the time but then you just gotta remember <laughs> everybody is drunken on fucking drugs they're having a great time anyway that's they're, why we should hand out drugs and yeah. and, and stuff in the beginning of the show oh my old band clara cries murder we play this shithole called the bolt in merrick and um, now it's a Subway sandwich place. But we, uh, we had a show where uh, my drummer and guitar player went around with liquid acid and were giving it to everybody. And that was a fucking hell of a night, you know? Like, you know Not a bad idea. Can't, can't do that anymore. I mean, we were, they weren't dosing people. It was by, you know, they were asking them yeah. politely if they'd like some, you know? Um, I always wondered, you know, like as far as like practice goes, you know, we, we only play, like when I get to practice, I feel like if we already wrote the song and recorded it, I never want to play it. Like when I get to practice, I'm just like, oh, this is boring. I'd rather write new stuff and play new stuff. That's how I feel. How do you guys practice? You guys just practice the set all the time, like for three hours? Um, well, first off, we'll do this thing. It's called, I call the ladder, where we'll pick two songs. Typically, what are your first two songs going to be in your set? 
Okay. And we'll do song number one, song number two, song number one, song number two, song number one, song number two. So we do them three times each off the bat just to kind of get like warmed up and sync so that those first songs are going to be killer out the gate. And then from there, we'll start figuring out a set. Usually if we got like a 30 minute set, we'll work on 35 minutes worth of music in case we got to go longer, if we got to cut something, whatever. <laughs> and then from that point on, what do we feel like playing? What are we rusty on? Are we writing for a record? Do we have time? And then I try to like, when we're going to get into the, the phase of really having to start writing, not really have shows booked so that we can focus our attention on um, really working on the new songs. At home, you can plug in your iPad and practice the songs and you can do your homework. It's not as necessary to play the stuff that we've already done at that point. But then when we're definitely rehearsing for a show, then you got to bring your game with it, you know? Amazing. So, yeah. I, I, mean, <laughs> I feel like, because um, even like with the pilot program, you know, we play that set. Every time we're practice, that's what it is. It's the set, it's the set. Um, but it's, you know, it's the same order. Um, so whenever... <laughs> Whenever we play like a song from like a record that we put out like three years ago, it never sounds good. And in my head, I'm thinking like, oh my God, we're the worst band on the planet. We're the worst. Why we even play? You know what it is? When you drag shit out the closet though for a bit, like the first two, three sessions you play it, it does sound like shit. That's for, dude, like um, I'm sure Guns N' Roses, when they get in their room and it's been weeks, they're fucking up shit. Like that's how it is, you know? But yeah. then a couple of days later, starts sounding good. And like, there's definitely songs that we have that are 10, 12 years old that I never get sick of. I mean, they're not many. And there's a few throughout the years that we collect that we know people like and respond to. And then we swap things in and out and we try to do two covers each show at minimum that we try to change all the time. So that makes it fun and exciting where we're always doing something different, you know? What were the last two covers that you guys did? We were doing Degenerated from Reagan's Youth and we were, we were doing... um. Oh God! We did Nirvana breed. We were doing um, Ryan Adams, Rats in the Walls. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we were doing a couple. I, I can't. We, we just, and we'll do something. We'll learn a song and do it once, and and then not do it again. Or we did Heartbreaker from the Stones for a, a run. Um, you know, whatever. You know, and I've been um I've been playing a lot lately on uh, Thursdays doing um at five p.m. Yep, five p.m. live at five. five. You know, what's up? Why five? Yeah, you know, it's like easy to say live at five. A lot of my friends and people like are working from home. So like they'll just pretend they're working and they can make a screen like this where like they capture their face just doing that for 30 seconds. And people yeah. think they're they're like at work, but really they're watching their phone or whatever else. So it's cool not to yeah. blow up their spot, you know, but um, but then I've, I've been taking requests and I've been doing all sorts of shit I never would normally do. So, I mean, I've seen you done some videos on Facebook, but you haven't done anything live, right? I actually did. Um, Shit, so sorry, me and, and Antonio Longo did. Um, he, I mean, I would never do it on my own because I just feel like no one gives a shit. <laughs> so, but he was just like, come, come live with me. And I was like, cool. And then we did it once and we did it for like an hour. So I played four songs. He played four songs. Uh, so it kind of, you know, it went great. So we did it again, like a few weeks later um just this saturday we did it and then actually my friend shannon who, who's from jersey she's in a band called erotic, erotic novels she nice. did some, she did something on 90.3 and she uh i went live with her yesterday and did like five songs no that's the studio at nassau 90.3 no that? she lives in jersey oh, okay so whatever college radio stuff that was gotcha. um but you know uh it's not my favorite thing to do but I'm not going to say no when someone asks me. Yeah, I mean, I, that stuff is interesting. So I remember like going to the radio stations and doing acoustic promo in the room. It's definitely awkward and weird and it's nerving. But it's, it's look, I'm glad to be asked to do it, definitely. That's why I say yes. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, cool. You want me to do it? I don't know why, but sure, why not? But as far as the live thing on Thursdays, dude, the first week, only like a couple of my close friends that I texted gave two shits. But it's been building like, it just goes week to week to week. It's, it's been getting a little better every time. And, you know, that's cool. You know, just, that's cool. You get to build your chops, which is what, like, when we do Cover Me Bad, we've been doing it for, like, 10 years. And it's just a fun thing that we do, like, five times a year because we get to learn these songs and keep, like, um, you know, you keep your chops up. So if you're going to do this once a week, it's like, you know, you're in that the, 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 the mode of playing. And hopefully when everything kind of kicks off again, 
you know, little by little, I guess, you know, you'll be, you know, you'll be like, uh, uh, you'll have like a verbal six pack, you know? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, <laughs> um, and like, I've been, I've been trying to do, like trying not to turn down any requests unless they're absolutely like preposterous and there's no way I'm not going to do Bohemian Rhapsody. You know what I mean? Like I'm just, it's not going to work, but. You take requests and then you do um, like, so leading up to the show. Yeah, I'll take requests through Instagram and Facebook throughout the week. And um, what are some good ones that they gave you? Uh, I got Willie Nelson this week. So, I mean, it's when it's something I'm not really familiar with, it's really challenging because I got to like, learn the song and get it in my head. And I try to really memorize as much as I can. Like, I do take notes and sight read, but I try to like do that as little as possible. Yeah. And if something is just not, like, I was doing, I was working on a Fiona Apple song and it was just, my hands had it, but I was just, juggling the words and screwing them up and jumbling them and whatnot so i, I pushed that down so I'll, and we'll see if i can get that done this week but i've been yeah what I learned, what I learned, stuff, you know i'm sorry um what i learned about covers you know because you know because you're a musician forever and you have a friend and these friends don't know you know they don't play so they think that you could just play whatever um and, and i usually can most of the time to a degree <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I can't because I just, uh, if I don't remember the melody, like if I didn't grow up with the melody, you know what I'm saying? Like if I'm learning the song that day, it just doesn't work. Like I need to, like I just did the Lemonheads one because I've been listening to the song since 93. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Even songs that I haven't ever attempted to play, but I've heard them like through osmosis, you know, hundreds of times, it's a lot easier. Um, so that's it. And then the other thing, sometimes I decline is if like I get like, three requests for songs that all sound the same. If there's like, there's a lot of songs that are the same. So I'm not going to do, I try, I'll try to break them up. I'll push it to next week or whatnot. I don't want, cause you know, I'm not going to do glycerine. And when I come around to the same song, you know, like, you know, it's funny. Like that, Why know? was I thinking of when I come around too? <laughs> I don't but know. <laughs> It is the same. It is the same uh, chord pattern, but I don't know why I was thinking this. I was thinking like in my head, I'm like, what could I compare when I come around to? <laughs> We're on the we're on the fucking wavelength, man. Yeah. But um, yep. what made you wanna what made you wanna do this? Like, um, because I always said like, so you've been on Red River twice, yeah. and there's certain people who come on, um, and I think they're really good. Um, like the other day we had Steve Andolfo from Contra and Small Arms Dealer. Nice. I gotta yeah. listen to that one. I haven't gotten to it yet. But yes. So we it all start it all stemmed from a a, a, a disagreement over the movie Natural Born Killers. <laughs> And I was like, you know what? I'm like, let's do a little, uh, you know, uh, what is that? A Siskel and Ebert thing at the movies. And we'll, we'll, we'll pick a movie we both love, we both hate. And then like, you know, like a, a back and forth thing. Um, but after we were done, I was thinking like, he's so natural at, at like communicating and, and being so likable. Uh, and the same thing with you. Like, you know, even people that didn't know the band or whatever, like when they listen to you talk, like you're, you're good on your feet. So I always thought that maybe you should do a podcast. I mean, I'm obviously, you know, at this age in, in my life, it's either a podcast or I'm going to get into stand-up comedy. And <laughs> that's just not going to happen right now during the fucking lockdown, I guess. Yeah. And I've, I've been trying to think of an idea. And like this situation presented itself, you know, where it's like, okay, there's nothing else we can do. Yeah. And, and the technology was simple where I'm not going to edit this. It's just going to be what the fuck it is, you know? Yeah. So are you going to pull audio or are you going to just do this video thing? This is recording both. So I'm going to see what I can do. So we'll see, you know, um, I think I'm going to just put audio up if it, if it's good enough, you know, if it's all like wishy-washy and jangly, maybe not, but we'll see, you know, so this is the pilot. You're the fucking, uh, you're, you're, just, you're fucking testing me into space here. But um, <laughs> being that it is, we're here as a result of lockdown. I wanted to ask, cause you're in Suffolk County on the Queens. What does fucking the lockdown look like in Suffolk? I mean, I know what I see on TV. I've seen momos and fucking like open the country truthers protesting in Comac with fucking flags and shit. But like, is there, is that happening yet? Or are people obeying the rules? I know there's, I've never slept so good in my life. There's basically no fucking traffic and I live on a busy street, you know? Like, um, I live in West Babylon and uh, everything's, cool here everyone they're wearing their mask um everyone's uh, social distancing are they wearing masks while smoking cigarettes because i see that all fucking day here it's hysterical that i haven't seen <laughs> but the, i i'm not looking for that so maybe now I'll, I'll be more mindful of it um but no everyone seems to be cool here i i, I don't know much about protesting in comac 
<laughs> but um, the thing with that is, you know, the more people you add to the to, to the mix, the more random shit that they're going to want to do. Um, so if you have a ton of people living in a county, whether it be Suffolk or whatever, yeah. um, you're just going to eventually hit a demographic of people who are uh, just awful. And uh, <laughs> if that's what they want to do, then I get, you know, more power to you. Um, I just hope that when, you know, if people get sick that decided to take play, you know, partake in that, that they would, you know, be last on the line to get looked at. You know, like <laughs> doesn't work that way though. I mean, it's interesting though. We haven't really learned much since the fucking black and pneumonic plagues. When you look at our behaviors, because during that time, what did they still do? They still went to like their houses of worship and tried to like pray it away. And they got sicker because they were in like, you know, they thought it was the air and the miasmas. Then we know that people coughing on each other is going to get them sick, but they're, they're not phoning in and online. They're still trying to go to places. And like, I've always kind of done, I've tried to operate like in all aspects of life. Like I was kind of like ready for this because I've always been doing some of these things. Like I, I'm never going to be doing grocery shopping on a Saturday morning. I'm just not going to go any place that's busy. Like I'm always going to do the opposite of what most people are doing. So like when the shit started hitting the fan here, and I couldn't even get into my grocery store because they were panic buying the toilet paper and all the chicken cutlets. I went to Chinatown because all the xenophobes were afraid of Asians and it was yeah. dead and it was civilized. And I got all the shit I needed for two weeks, you know? Like, what, the one time being a, xen, a xenophile, uh, whatever the fuck you said, um, paid off. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, them all being xenophiles paid off for people who, you know, just. Yeah, yeah, for, for normal people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Know? The one time that you, you know, you coexist with some, you're like, oh, you're not going to go here? Cool. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> yeah, let me go get that awesome shrimp that you cannot ever get in a grocery store, you know, <laughs> from the markets um, before they close down, you know? <laughs> I feel like some people um, just, I don't know, like, man, information. Like, some people can't handle uh things like youtube you know i uh it's amazing the kid like you know somebody who is completely out of their mind uh 30 years ago would just be some guy who would be out of his mind that you'd never hear of but now it's like these people all found each other and somebody spitball some crazy idea and they make a video and uh you know it just it, you know you could share it now and if you believe in all this stuff then then that's fine but me uh, I'm just going to wake up and just do what I have to do. Like, I'm not really like, uh, I'm not into the, the doom and stuff, you know, whatever it is, it is, you know, like if there is something behind the scenes, so be it. Like, I'm like, what am I going to do? Stop it. You know, like, I'm just going to deal with it the best I can, which is just wake up and do what I normally do. Yeah. I mean, the irresponsible thing, I think with the conspiracy sites and the YouTube is that the people producing that content don't even believe that shit themselves. Most of the time, like Alex Jones doesn't believe the thing he's fucking saying. He just knows that he can sell his fucking vitamins and whatever else to the people who listen to him. I mean, you know, this is purely like just going to, there's no advertisements, none of that. We're just doing whatever, but the big sites, they're all just trying to sell products and dick pills and whatever else. And we're not like doing that shit. So like we can just say what it is, but I, I feel like it's scared of people that latch onto that stuff and believe it is the opposite yes. of reality and the ridiculousness. And also those are the people they'll believe like fucking the craziest conspiracies that 5g is causing the disease, even though 5g is in like two countries and like, but they won't believe the obvious things that are happening yeah. right in front of them, which is yeah. hysterical. You know, it's like, that it's is, like mental farsightedness. I don't know. Like, Well, I think what it is is just everyone being so skeptical on everything that they kind of just, lose common sense in some way <laughs> like look skepticism is not a bad thing you shouldn't know it's just what you hear but i mean you know there's got to be some you know you can't you gotta like, you gotta just kind of vet things a little to some degree you know yeah, like, yeah all i know is uh you know whatever whatever my facebook feed says uh sometimes like you know i'll never take stock in it you know like no one no one knows and and that's just the way it is you know i'll just play music hang out watch movies and these people could do whatever they want and more power to you yeah facebook there's a lot of opinions of people angrily angrily telling us how it is man but if they know what's up why are they so mad you know <laughs> you guys 
I see all these people who have like beautiful families and a nice house and things that I, I don't fucking have. And they're so pissed that some person is getting a few extra hundred bucks on their fucking in unemployment that they would have normally gotten at their regular job. How about be mad at their job for not paying them and not be mad at the person who you're lucky they're getting that money. If they weren't, maybe they'd be climbing in your window with a fucking knife in their teeth, you know? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, those are the people that seem, you know, it's, it's always, yeah. Uh, you know, middle class, you know, uh, being mad at like poor people and not like, you know, fucking rich people that finger fuck the country <laughs> since day one. You know, it's like, um, yeah, it's just bizarre. It's like you're angry because somebody has, uh, you know, buys cigarettes with food stamps that you don't, you know, you're not mad at like Bernie Madoff, you know? Yeah, man. I want to ask too, like, what do you think the future holds, man? For a band like Playing Dead, you guys don't really tour, but like, if New York doesn't open till September and maybe you might have to go to fucking Vermont to play a show because they're open. Maybe you have to go to Western Pennsylvania because they don't give two shits and you got to fucking just do your show in a ventilator with a lavalier up it or something, you know, like, <laughs> you might have to do the toxic waltz like legit, you know, <laughs> nine albums, still no ballad. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever, uh, you know, whatever, lemons we get thrown at you know we'll try to make the lemonade and, and that's it man it, it just looking forward to going back to practice to finishing the record making more music uh living life podcasting eating food getting fatter um, gas station with, pizza man i hope your place didn't shut down yes <laughs> was that one time and it was you know every now and then like uh you know that gas station uh you know, sometimes you eat something disgusting and then when you eat it, like your bar is so low that you're like, that actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And that was that one time. I'm lucky. I've been riding my bike a lot for exercise and New Park Pizza and Howard Beach is a good destination because it's, it's a good like 20 mile round trip. So I earn the pizza and then I come back. Yes. And they, and they got a good system too with their, they have both their doors open. So you wait at one, you go in, you get your shit, you go out the other way and yeah. that's it, you know, and that's, that's smart. And, you know, well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I would have to bike, you know, uh, to like Africa or <laughs> somewhere just to earn that pizza. Cause I'm, I'm, uh, I'm about 80 pounds over right now. So it's all good, man. You know, if you're going to get out and play guitar and fucking sweat it out soon enough. I mean, I think it's going to be too. I don't, I don't see venue. I don't see like the Gramercy or Irving Plaza opening anytime soon. I'm hoping the dive bars are able to because they're in a lot of danger, but I think the futures you know. might be basement shows and backyards that cops are going to be coming and busting them more than fucking ever. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I think it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. You know, I that think sounds, it's going to be more outlaw than, than it used to be, you know? Uh, that sounds like fun to me, you know, like anytime <laughs> you could, you know, de you know, for, for someone who grew up, you know, that way and, you know, uh, definitely, uh, authority wasn't really like something that I was into. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, I guess my girlfriend sometimes, you know, it's, uh, whatever she's comfortable with, you know, cause, uh, she's way more worried about things than I am, you know? <laughs> so, uh, I, I, whatever I could do peacefully sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think we'll be at a point where we can do basement shows and, I think that'll be the near future with, with a small amount of people, you know, that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You know, 20, 30 people hanging out. Um, it's, it's just, just making music, man. Like, you know what I started watching the other day um, with my girlfriend, uh, the show Songland? So I haven't seen it. What is it? So um, it's one of those like uh, contest shows, but this one I like. I'm a huge fan of songwriting. I love it. Like, I love, like, you know, uh, the way fucking uh, <laughs> Matt Damon loved, you know, <laughs> equations and goodwill hunting. <laughs> I just, that's how I stare at a song, you know, like, I'm like, once I get that perfect chord progression or pre chorus or verse, like, I'm just like, yes, on to the next one. So um, these people, they have four contestants on every show and um, they pitch their song so there's three judges and they're all songwriters super successful songwriters and they always have a guest host 
So the first episode of the second season was like, let's say Lady Antebellum. Okay. So these four contestants are pitching their song to Lady Antebellum. So they pick three of the four to work with the three producers and the producer that comes up with the best song is the song that they take by the end of the show. And it's, it's just great. It, it shows like, um, it shows them working. It, it shows them taking like a song and sure it's a pop format and you know, that's what they do. Is but the end product fun. ever anything good? Or is it like yeah. the songs they were chatting out on like supernova that were all whack, you know? <laughs> no, they're like the, the H E R, you know, the her episode had some really cool stuff. Uh, the girl, uh, some girl from long Island one. And the song sounded like Amy Winehouse. It cool. was like super cool stuff. It's Props to Long TV. Island. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we haven't had a real hero since Blue Oyster Cult. Like, we need something huge. I uh, don't know. You know, uh, Twisted Sister, R.A. the Rugged Man, EPMD, <laughs> De La Soul. Oh, Taking Back Sunday. Uh, Buster Rhymes is from Reunion Daily. We know that. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. But, I mean, Blue Oyster Cult, too. But, you, you know. Twisted Sister over them. I'm just kidding. We had the entire 90s Long Island emo scene and all that, you know, like. You know what I'm saying? All right, no doubt, man. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it here because I don't try to get too long-winded on these things. Man, it's really good seeing you, man. It's been a bit. We would have seen each other probably fucking 70 times, like, in, in the span yeah. of, of the last two months, if not for uh, being, you know, trapped at our respective, uh, you know, fucking seclusion areas, you know. You know, and if you're going to be trapped, what a, what a good time to be trapped you know with um wi-fi yeah um netflix you know it's uh this isn't like 30 years ago where we would be watching the same you know um tango and cash the uh vhs <laughs> yeah i mean we'd uh you'd be wearing out your vhs is definitely you'd be re- you could actually recite this fucking movies verbatim in the living room by that point yeah. you know yeah so it's 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 a good time if you're going to be stuck and uh you know bike riding and uh listening to spotify yeah. I mean, definitely, look, the, the way that we're able to handle this compared to other parts of the world, I mean, there's definitely, nobody should be out protesting and complaining. Like, my, my wife cut my hair the other day, you know, it looks fine, you know, like, and, you know, yeah, we get to fucking ride this out in the lap of fucking luxury. I mean, we really do. So it's not the fucking, it's, it's terrible for people who are sick and everyone that we know. I mean, I've had friends who are on a ventilator and luckily they fucking recovered. But it's, I, you know, yeah, it's I, scary. But, but those of us who have been lucky to, like, I was sick as shit. I don't know. I, haven't, I wasn't able to get tested. So I don't know if I had it, but I had all the symptoms. Hopefully I'm all right. You know, I'm not taking yeah. chances. I'm wearing that mask every day, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. At this point, like, everyone knows somebody who knows somebody or personally knows someone. And, uh, you know, not being able to breathe sucks. <sighs> it's, it's terrifying, you know. And, um, you it. yeah, it's an important thing. The masks are pain in the ass, though. I mean, but I'm wearing them. But it's just like I'm definitely sucking in a lot of carbon dioxide with it stuck to my face, you know. Like, especially when you're riding a bike, you know, it's it's annoying. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're where you live is probably a little bit more of that. Uh, luckily for us, it's you know a little bit a little bit more leg room out here. Yeah, it's a good thing. But uh, yeah, man, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, hopefully you'll continue to do these because uh, certain people are just good at at. Uh, having a conversation, talking. I know you have a lot of cool stories. So, uh, you know, maybe you'll get like D. Snyder next. Yeah, well, we'll see. I, I got a couple of people I'm, I'm interested in talking to. So I'm, I'm going to start it off, you know, from my circle and, you know, yeah. we'll see how it goes, you know. But uh, yo, thanks again, man. It's awesome uh, talking to you. Uh, so Karen, I said, what's up? And, uh, you know, cheers. Awesome. So is this a secret or could I tell people I did this? No, no, I'm, I'm going to, you know, you can tell me, dude, I'm definitely going to just make sure that, quality wise it's all good it looks like it's fucking good but it's i think you never know man it's recording but you can't trust it when it bounces it could it could explode and not work you know you know how that goes yeah i'm curious too <laughs> actually let me know because like i have to do one of these um via zoom and uh, the dude's in germany and uh, uh george is in vegas so i gotta figure out how to do that logistically sure yeah this is like the zoom pro i guess like the corporate version okay so Hopefully there's no glitches, but you know, we'll see. I'll let you know as soon as okay. I'm done. Cool. All right, man. Well, check you later, man. Peace out. Later.